Welcome, welcome. If you're new here, hello. My name is Brenna. I am your drama straight to the veins DM and welcome to Tales from the Catacombs. This is our tabletop RPG adventure that we are thrilled to share with you. This game uses the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition D20 system and rules and the setting is a homebrew based on the rock musical Razia's Shadow by Forgive Durden which I highly recommend you listen to. It is boss. We do have a brief introduction to the setting that you can read at your own leisure and I hope you will so that you can be as immersed in the world as our players are. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of Razia's Shadow, a thousand year interlude. Session five, exhausted efforts. Before the night was over, Snow had one very important objective, a penned letter to his sister Taryn and enjoying some wine as this seemed to be both a joyful and difficult letter to write. He befriended the bartender at the Wild Pike, Darian, and earned a liter of an amber-colored, unnamed, but clearly suitable drink that he sipped for the rest of his evening. In the morning, the novices received their first assignments as participants in the guardianship. Each one found a sealed note in their mailboxes with brief feedback and then instructions from Captain Nora Isalan to meet at the Rising Gate. The novices realized they slept in after their arduous first day and immediately headed to their first task. It became clear before long that Stayan was still exhausted from a fitful night. Their guide for their assignment turned out to be Kamugal, the half-orc that stopped snow at the gate the day before. Rather than tolerate his brash words, they assisted Sazian, the stable hand, in readying a wagon, but their mode of transportation was questionable. They were offered a young pony, likely on its first ride, or else they could walk. Kamugal instructed them to head to an outpost called Undra and stand watch for two days before he and his associate Kalane would relieve them. He also offered them silver if they could get there based on landmarks alone. That turned out to be nothing more than a joke. And after a few hours delay, the novices were on their course. Right at sunset, they reached the marked clearing with a worn down house and small temple ruins. The house would have to do for shelter as they waited out their assignment. But before they could settle in for the night, the sounds of approaching footsteps and a nasty howling set them all on alert. Well, I think I was opening the door because <laughs> Viola and I want our way out, so I'm going to close the door <laughs> quietly. So if I recall correctly, so where we kind of where we left you guys off, Viola immediately grabbed the pony, Buttercup, <laughs> brought her inside. I'll allow it, but yes, I believe yes, Bo was about to head out. I think he said he wanted to go hunting, get some get some stuff for the evening. Stayin was about to head out. I think she wanted to do something and then you guys heard this sound for the record Question. i believe viola was in the middle or had successfully gotten buttercup into the into yeah. the hobble well i think she got him in first and then she was gonna go get him food is why she was going back out gotcha okay okay understood yeah. question answer does snow recognize the sound i will let you roll Can either I, <laughs> I will allow you to roll either just a straight up intelligence or if you have additional anything from like an animal handling i'll let you roll that could i roll a survivor survivor for it animal or handling no. or intelligence yes a survival or i, I, or I could the, do or i could do i'll let you roll the handling. same as okay, him yeah. if you want to i'll do intelligence because that's better for me than animals <laughs> okay. it's better than animals Ah, 15. That one. That's so much not as good as your... I almost got a nat, nat one, to be honest. <laughs> we almost had two nat ones. <laughs> oh, no. To a great start. Right. No, Snow, you don't recognize the sound of these creatures. What about a 15? I'm not even sure I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all in my head. What, was, what did you get, Bo? 15. With a 15, I will say you... You don't know exactly what these creatures are. In your wanderings over time, you might have heard something similar to it, but not very often. So whatever it is, it's not common. It's not just like a, a roaming kind of beast. It's probably something 
a little maybe nastier than that. Guys, I think we should kill it. Well, them, to be more precise. I think there's more than one. So what I think is we should get it away from this cabin and then kill it over there so that way it doesn't risk bringing down the house here because it's, it's not exactly stable. So what we could do is I could act as a decoy and I could run towards the, the shrine place that we were at before and then you guys can flank them as they're chasing me. Sounds Do like a decent have a reason to me. for attacking this. Well, could they just run by us and leave us be if we stay quiet? I mean, if they run by us, they could also just keep coming back. If we're out here for two days, why would we want to risk them just keep coming and coming? We don't have reason to believe that's going to happen, though. So okay, but we also don't have reason to think that I wouldn't. Why don't we just take them out? How many are there? Do we even know? I mean, I'm guessing at least two. Does it sound like just two? I'm just guessing here. <laughs> you can give me a perception check. Did Viola hear it too, or has just Bo heard it so No, far? I think all of us have so heard it. So everyone heard the initial, this initial kind of growling or almost cawing, maybe. it's It was just a, a kind of screeching, screaming kind of sound. So I got um, a 14, mm -hmm. Catherine. Okay. Oh, wait. Cassie got I got 17. a 17. Okay. What you realize, so when you first heard it, it definitely sounded like more than one. Not like some swarm, some horde or anything, but it definitely sounded like more than one. And you also realize that you haven't heard, like in all of your talking, you haven't heard it again. Not from inside the house. I don't know, guys. I mean, if you really want to, try and weigh it out. But it could spook Buttercup. And if it spooks Buttercup, horses jump around when they get spooked. Which means the horse could bring down true. the house on us. And if that happens, the horse is going to get crushed. Does the I'm house look more like that stable or that unstable? <laughs> I mean, that's how... Give me an investigation check. <laughs> well, I just remembered <laughs> that I asked about climbing on top of it and Brand did not give me a very strong looking face She'll expression about it. So if Bo, who's like 100 pounds maybe, maybe can't stand on it. she just didn't think ahead. <laughs> 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 yes, no, doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> From your last investigation of the house when you first entered, you didn't initially get the impression that, like, it was just gonna, like, you were gonna sneeze and it was gonna fall or anything. <laughs> well, I was thinking more like Buttercup would just, like, attract more attention from whatever's coming I mean, around. I mean, that could happen too. And then we have a bunch of animals around us. I'm saying we seize the initiative. Should we creep out and listen again and see if we can even hear if it's coming or not? Because I haven't heard anything else since that initial, whatever you want to call that, commotion. Okay. Uh, well, what if, I could sneak out there if y'all want me to. Or we could go together. Or, or okay, then I guess I'll... I'm not good at sneaking, so... <laughs> That's true. Well, yeah, keep your armor on, Viola. <laughs> I'm going to go sneak out there. <laughs> All right, let's see. Stealth. Come on. If you'd like to know at home <gasps> how we know. <laughs> well done. If you'd like to know at home how we know that Viola's not great at stealth, you should go back to session four. <laughs> go I back mean, and take a look. Yeah. <laughs> 26. Yep. Okay. Which door are you exiting? I guess he will come out this way and maybe hide in this bush. <laughs> <laughs> So he came out through the front? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, Bo, you sneak out. Well done. And you... <laughs> so it's... When you get back outside, you are reminded that it is after sunset. You are in an area that has plenty of trees and foliage, which would further block sun, uh, like the last remaining bits of edges of sunlight from the horizon. So all you see is just the dark deep velvety blue sky above you. How well are you able to see in the dark? I have 60 foot dark vision. Beautiful. So you see quite well in the dark is what you're saying. <laughs> Beautiful. When you look out, you see kind of this cluster of creatures. They have a strange mix of kind of bird-like with their beaks and also kind of scaly lizard-like. Their skin and their wings kind of spread out and it looks like it's connected almost like 
spiky webbing. And you see them kind of fitfully in an area just just ahead of you now. It seems like they've they've traveled, and I will show you. They're that close. Oh, they're close <laughs> to the close to Buttercup. So you see these creatures kind of by these downed trees and these bushes. And they seem to be clustered in that area, looking about, kind of looking almost amongst themselves. I realized How we both feel about I should have, these creatures. Well, I realized I should have opened a mind link before coming out here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about oh. that. It's okay, Stan doesn't want it anyway. <laughs> She's like, assuredly not. Give me a wisdom perception check, please. Wisdom. Mm-hmm. 17. Beautiful. So these, this cluster of these creatures appear to be agitated, which makes sense considering how they sounded when they approached. They are kind of clawing at the ground, focused downward as opposed to in any other direction. It almost looks as if they are kind of digging at the ground itself. Then they kind of stop and let out these small little cawing sounds, start digging again in frustration, stop again, let out another little caw as if communicating to each other in, in frustration and anger. They appear to be doing this and moseying almost, moving about, continuing to claw at the ground, right. caw and move. So. He's gonna come back here real quick. All right, guys, it looks like they are kind of grazing a bit, which, I mean, I personally don't think is a good idea to keep them here, because they might be here for a while, and we don't know what they're grazing for. They are right outside Buttercup's door. So what I do they? think they're kind of like these lizards, but also not lizards, they got like wings. So, in general, I don't know what they are. <laughs> but... How many are there? There's only four, so we're evenly matched. One for each of us. Exactly. Are they threatening us? They certainly could. Are you going to try and tell me you're a pacifist now, too? I believe that there's no point in taking a life that has not asked for its death. Oh, trust me, I think they would ask for it if they could speak. Do you know they can't speak? That's a great question. You want me to go out there and ask? Sure. <laughs> if they're kind of like birds, do you think we can just like shoo them away? I mean, they're yeah, bigger. Yeah, you probably just scare them off. They're bigger than a bird. Well, you didn't say how big they are. You just said they're lizards. I mean... Um, lizards are quite small, usually. Okay, well, they're big enough that I could see them from a distance. That doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> okay, well, do you think I could see a little gecko from 60 feet away and be like, Oh, that thing must be big or small. No, it is standing out. So are anyway, they, like, as big as you? They take up about as much space as I do. <laughs> <laughs> so like a five by five on a grid. <laughs> yeah, if we, were on, if we were on a grid, it would be like a five by five. <laughs> all right, all right. That makes sense. That helps. So a med oh, one of them just grew. <laughs> 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 that definitely seems more threatening if they're growing. <laughs> oh yeah, this, you'd have to roll a perception for that one, but you didn't see it. You didn't see it. Carry on. Maybe we just keep an eye and ear out and see if they move on their way. All right. Well, in the meantime, do you want to maybe hang out with Buttercup since it likes you the most? Sure. I'm just saying, if it starts, they are right outside its door. I fail is gonna walk into the room and I guess I'll leave the door open. I won't shut the door and just pet Buttercup and see how she's doing and make sure she's nice and calm. Give I... me an animal handling check. Oh no. Oh, but this is your best friend. 17. Okay. Hey. You are smoothing her, her new budding mane and she seemed to be shaking a little bit at the sounds from outside, but as if on cue when you walk in the door she and start to pat her she begins to nuzzle up against you and gives low <sniffs> nuzzles up with you cute. she's quite cute and i realized i don't have a token for her knew i was forgetting <laughs> something dang 
So are you guys waiting out these creatures? I think we're waiting a little bit, seeing if the situation changes. Yeah, all I'm saying is that come next night, we're killing them. Who has eyes on them while you're waiting? Or are you not looking out the windows anymore? Is there a window like over, like, this side? If not, Bo would just go back in the bush, maybe. I'm trying to see on my map if there is a window. I don't think I put a window there. Okay, so <laughs> Bo is going to... All right, I'm going to go keep an eye on him. And he's going to come this way, I guess, and go back to his bush. Okay. You want to roll another stealth for me? All right. Come bush. on, come on. The <laughs> 21. Bush. Why do I even bother sometimes? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's All always right. the chance of a nat one. <laughs> That's true. Oh, those sweet, sweet nat ones. I mean, what? That'd be crazy. So, Bo, you take a look and you're watching. You're probably sitting there for a solid 30 minutes watching them move through the trees. Some, a few times they get a little close to that wall, but they are constantly digging at the ground. Digging, and they still have that agitated look about them. They move along. They move further away. As they're getting further away, they kind of like sniff up into the air, look down at the ground. Give me a perception check. Oh, well, my string of luck has come to an end. I got a six. <laughs> okay. They sniff around as they move away. Occasionally, they move back down towards the house, digging at the ground, shaking their heads, flustered, start to move away. And eventually, they move out of sight. So you do not see the creatures any longer. They've moved in this leftward direction <laughs> alright well they seem to have moved on I hope you feel satisfied in them being alive for now what were they doing? I don't know they were digging on the ground digging? yeah was there something out there? not that I could see maybe they're lizards that eat lizards and they were digging for more lizards <laughs> possible Tiny old Maybe we should go look. We we could. All right. Uh, yeah, it's over this way. And I think you had one there. I guess they would probably see holes all over the place. Oh, for sure. You see a ton of these scratch marks. And some of them have actually dug pretty deep. They seem to be focused on some areas. But most of those seem to be in these areas, kind of near the house. The ones up here are scratch marks for sure, but you see some very deep marks by the house. Do we see anything in the holes? Give me an investigation check. Mm. Anyone who wants to do it. We'll do it like all or nothing. So it's not like, oh, well, I want to double check. Well, I want to double check. Well, I got an eight. You see 18. nothing? Oh, I forgot about stains. <laughs> Wait, but you have a uh, plus four potentially. Yeah, she's still spamming guidance. Yeah. Let me grab that. Poor girl. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's right. She's still. I almost forgot she was still exhausted. I mean, that brings her up to an eight, which isn't great, but it's hey, better we than nothing. Better than nothing. I lo you, you love Snow to got a see 20. it. So what do we got? We have an eight, 20, 18, and a four. Stan and Bo, you guys see these pits of dirt. Snow and Viola. So you guys see... As you're sort of digging in, looking about, there were maybe a, a couple of them maybe had tracks from where grubs, like little, little grubs might be. They might have been feeding on that. But those were up further away from the house. The ones by the house, they don't have anything like that. They just look like these agitated, deep digging holes as if they were maybe looking for something and insistently you come across what appears to be some kind of maybe a stone foundation for the house there's definitely something beneath the wooden hovel it could just be a foundation but there's definitely something underneath it they How? are like looking for something it looks like there's like do you see that in these holes, there's, like, stone down there? Wait, so when you say that, it's, like, uh, there's a foundation under it? 
Does that mean like there's a crawl space to get into it or no? From that area, you just see that stone kind of, it's pretty far down. So it's a, it's a decent reach down, but you don't see a crawl space or anything. You just see. What about in the side below. of the house? There's that square box thing. Isn't there like a hole oh. right there? Yeah, that's what I mean. There's definitely <laughs> damaged floor there. <laughs> Just on a quick blush, you do see that it seems to go to some kind of some kind of foundation, some kind of broken something there, but it doesn't look like anything more than just a sheet of stone. If you are going back into the house, give me an investigation check. All right. And give it to me with advantage since oh. you are looking specifically for you have this additional knowledge. Okay. You can roll then with advantage. I got 16 with advantage then. I got 18 22. with advantage. Ooh, it's just a normal roll. <laughs> it's normal this time. Aw. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> with a normal roll. <laughs> that exhaustion's really hitting hard. Stay and go to bed, get drunk. <laughs> it breaks through the disadvantage anyway. Oh, Stan, we love you so much. <laughs> you can roll normal this time. Now what? <laughs> Goodness. So, Stan, you get inside the house and you are just relieved to be back inside and just... The day is definitely starting to get to you pretty good at this point. Oh, where are we? Viola and Snow again. As you guys are going through, you all start to focus on that obvious kind of punch through the, the ground, which could have been because of time. It could have been something striking it. It's hard to say exactly with everything as broken down as it is. But as you guys are looking, you get this kind of sweeping, kind of humid, cold sense over you. And you do note that inside the house, despite the doors being open and letting in kind of more fresh air, there is this kind of overhang of just like humidity. But it actually seems to be more prominent to you on the other side of the house over in this direction wait so you're saying they feel it over <clears throat> here they feel just a, a yeah it just seems to be a hanging in that direction and as you approach you realize that almost too well covered but otherwise could have been mistaken there is another set of stairs there's a proper set of stairs going down with what appears to be like a broken hatch covered up by a chair and this kind of draped towel of some sort, some kind of piece of cloth. And it's covering these broken steps heading down towards more stone. But this stone doesn't appear to be a kind of flat foundation. It appears to be a series of stones kind of piled up small enough like they're small enough to move but if you were to on just first blush as you had when you entered the house initially it didn't look like anything at all just another piece of the ground but you've discovered there appears to be something here covered can snow go down the stairs you certainly may viola's snow gonna does. follow him and bo will follow after that stan's gonna hang out at the top and just sort of be a eye up here in case <laughs> if anything goes wrong yeah keep an eye on buttercup <laughs> The horse is the least of my concerns. Viola, Snow, and Bo, please give me a dexterity check, please. Not oh, a saving throw, just a check. Dexterity. Oh, no. Seven. Bo! This is your whole shtick! I know. <laughs> I've been having diminishing returns. 15. <clears throat> so Snow and Viola, who discovered this, begin to lead the way and carefully tread these broken stairs. Even Viola in her beautiful but weighty armor is making her way very gently. Bo, perhaps a little too eager, starts heading down the stairs, takes a bad step, and his foot cracks part of the stair, causing him to drop versus a nice, gentle <laughs> touchdown. But as he drops, he falls farther than he expects to. Like straight down? Like down. Okay. We'll get Careful to you in a moment. Bo, Bo is gone. <laughs> <laughs> it is, ah! you, you, you hear him, you, you watch him drop, 
Or you you hear the crack turn and then he's gone. <laughs> do we hear him land? <laughs> do I have a chance to grab the stairs? <laughs> Which is, do I not fall? Do I just fall straight you, through? No, you fell through him. You fell through him. What about the wall? Can it's, I like, uh, grab for the wall? <laughs> it's a it's a it's a drop and it's not a nice drop either you land and you do hear him land and it's a pretty sound smack as he drops onto something hard well here you go Catherine. it's my leap of faith <laughs> there's a leap of faith <laughs> fucking bow how'd we do so you'll take five fall oh, damage okay. as you smack Smack hard onto the ground in a very dark space. <laughs> oh, are you okay? Uh, it, I'm fine. Um, what do I see? I'll tell you in a moment. Oh, okay. Snow and Viola, what are you up to? As you're nearing the bottom of these stairs, and you're now kind of looking at this short wall of stones. Can or we see Bo? <laughs> Can you see in the dark? Oh, I was going to say, yes. Viola, we should have had Stan give her a lighted object. Viola's just <laughs> <laughs> touching the walls. <laughs> no, you can look over. Have a light. I can't see anything. Uh, no. So you can look over and you can look down and see kind of through shadow. You do see him kind of on the ground in what appears to be a kind of cleared out stony area but it's dark down there oh i have a tinder box and a candle for some reason can yeah I... I have a tinder box and a torch can i get those out oh that's probably a better torch? do you need light stan sort of calls down I, I do i can't see anything it's dark down here i don't know how they can see but i can't it's a part of magic are you calling oh. me magical stan are you yelling up from yep. this pit you're in? I thought they were down at the Are bottom. Are you calling me magical? Stan will take a small coin out of her pocket, cast light on it, and drop it down to Viola. Viola's gonna catch it. I'll even if like Bo you. fell through, it's probably not a good idea for me to come down just yet. <laughs> we'll tell no you what worries. we see. Are you alright, Bo? Uh, more or less. I mean... It could have been better, but all things considered, it's pretty fine. Do you see anything in there? I don't know yet. <laughs> Bo, have you, have you just, have, okay. So over to Bo. <laughs> so you've dropped, you will smack down onto this stone surface. Are, are you laying there? What are you doing? I, uh, I would have stayed lying down. I would have gotten up. Don't want to be prone now. Fair enough. You sit up, stand, and look about. And even in the darkness, you can see kind of a... It's just like a... All you can see at the moment is just kind of a, a clearing of stone. There, It gets a little darker going straight ahead of you and off to the right, as if it were leading away from where you are. All right. There's, there's a hallway. Uh, but that's about it. I, I mean, I don't know. I wait for you guys before I'm moving on. So, is he like? So he fell through the stairs. We're still on the stairs, looking down the hole. Can we get to him by going down the stairs, or do we have to jump down this hole? <laughs> You're unsure. The only direct way down you can currently see is the is the hole where he fell, but. The stones in front of you, from what you had seen before, also look like they've been piled up and perhaps, you know, they were not there as part of the foundation. Viola, maybe we could climb. move these stones and get through that way. Yeah. Does it look we can't climb over them? Say again, please. Can we climb over them? Probably not over because they're built up to wherever the roof or the bottom of the... Oh, okay. Wait, what if you guys grab that mattress and then throw it down the hole and then jump on the mattress? We're going to try to move the stones first. <laughs> Everybody just that wants to move rocks today. <laughs> We're just today rocking and rolling. Just, it's a good day for rocks. It's a good day for rocks. 
Okay, so Viola's <laughs> gonna try to start grabbing the stones and moving them to wherever no, to get we'll them out of the way. Take the help action. Excellent. Give me a strength check. Or a strength. You can give me a strength ath- athletics if you'd like. Does she have advantage since I'm helping? Yes. 16? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you make quick work of these of these stones. Maybe the stones were keeping us out or keeping something in. Well, let's hope it was keeping us out because I think I'm past that point. <laughs> that is true. We're going to have to come down there and get you I regardless. Mean, well, that's a... Well, maybe I can find a way to climb up to y'all, but yeah. I think Stain will decide to go down and join the crew. Okay. Because of all that you've seen, and you saw where Bo fell through, you saw how Snow and Viola were able to maneuver, you are able to get down those steps with some ease. (laughs) Enough ease that you do not, in fact, fall through. Good. When she comes down, Snow is going to kind of just like pat her on the back of it and say, glad you could join us and give you bardic inspiration (laughs) because you might need it. (laughs) Stan will just look down at him. I wouldn't leave y'all. I know. Viola's currently trying to find a way to like hook the coin into herself somewhere so that she can still have the light but not have to hold it. Oh my goodness, you should put it on your forehead in the wreath. It would be like this it would be like yeah. the helmet. Like the headlamps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, that's what she's gonna do. <laughs> so you guys Maybe we'll tie it and get it fixed in place for her. Aww. Thank you. Love it. You decided to move the stones. You move them aside, and they are more like, you know, they're they're rocks. They're nothing enormous, nothing like what you saw at the temple. And as you clear them out and they start to kind of filter away, you see a very short, low passage that heads a distinct angle downwards. It's dark, but as soon as you step into it, there's, you notice a sconce on the wall that lights. You continue this short passage, leads you in like a winding, oh, a winding path down until it opens into another dark area that as soon as you step out, again, a few sconces that were not immediately noticeable burst into life. So what you see in front of you is this kind of gutted out stone cavern. And you do see a passage going straight ahead. You also see there is a passage that goes upwards from where you are. And you do see a series of these torches that are embedded into the stone that are lit. As soon as you, as soon as the three stepped into this cavern, these torches lit up. Which way do we want to go? Um, you can see a little can bit. Can I get one of the torches and see if I can figure out anything about it, how it's automatically lighting, or look for signs of magic around it? You can do an Arcana check. Unless there's a particular spell you wanted to do. No. Okay. Uh, Guidance. <laughs> Snow, are you thinking we go that way? He's just going. <laughs> All right. She got a six total. <laughs> so she learned um, nothing. It's magic. It's magic. Boogie, woogie, woogie. That's right. We went there. We had to. Oh, whoops. We left staying in. The... Wow. You guys are just going, huh? <laughs> staying earlier. I Don't would never leave you me. guys. And meanwhile, we all just. So <laughs> as you're. <laughs> this no, is what happens when you should play control of a map. So as you guys are walking, you pass by uh, right around. Oh, I can't ping because I'm on the wrong one. So where staying is. As you guys hurried on. So up above you, you saw there's this little alcove where there's another one of these torches and this broken altar, it looks like, or table of some sort. So you see this wooden table that is cracked down the middle and you see this little baggie that's kind of left there on the table that is sealed. What's in the bag? Are you saying this one's the bag one, or is this one the bag one? The top one is the bag one. Below you, 
<laughs> Excellent. Give me one moment. Um, <laughs> below you, below you, there is a crate. This crate is nailed shut. Viola, I got an idea. Can I see mm. your sword? No. All right, then can you take your sword <laughs> and kind of put it in there? We're going to do like a... Uh, Kind of like I was thinking earlier with uh, staying stuck in that wall, we're gonna use it as kind of like give us leverage. So if you poke it and like slide it in between and then we apply pressure on this side. No, I'm not risk damaging my sword. Okay, what would you risk damaging? Hey, hey, Snow, <laughs> can we see a staff for a second? No. Or how about you- Don't you have a crowbar? No. Oh wait, do I have a crowbar or is something crowbar-esque? Crowbar Lots adjacent. Of crowbars. Do oh, I do have a crowbar. Do you need a crowbar? Whoa. I, don't know I have. have. I have a crowbar. I didn't even what am know I, that a dungeon was an master? Option. All right, I'm gonna use my Asking crowbar. Asking for my sword, and you have a tool <laughs> made for the job. <laughs> I didn't realize it was on here. All right, Bo pulls out a crowbar. <laughs> What's your inventory, boys and girls? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw that what I had a candle. That crowbar, Bo. He's gonna use it to try and pry <laughs> the chest open. Which, saying mm. that, I realize I should have just given it to Viola because she has more strength than I do. <laughs> so whoever is going to use the crowbar, please give me a strength check. Well, Bo's going to try it first because he was just <laughs> very excited. So you said it's just strength. Strength check. Got an eight. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, <laughs> you wedge the crowbar between the in the little slat that is between the top of the crate and then the bottom, the rest of it. And you push, you force your your weight down onto it and nothing happens. All right, Viola, do you mind? So I'm gonna position this in a way that I think would give you the most leverage. And then if you <laughs> wanna try and use your strength, I'll help you out by positioning it. And then you go ahead and you apply the force. So I'm going to take the help action <laughs> for Viola <laughs> to do it. <laughs> sure. Why not? So I'll give you advantage. 22. Yes. <laughs> 22 with there advantage. Go. Very good. So Viola, you masterfully push down on the crowbar to get that leverage. And it is easy to pry this thing open for you. You watch the, you watch the nails pry loose from the crate. And as soon as they do, this wafting, smoggy odor hits you right in the face. Please give me a constitution saving throw. Is that Viola or both of us? (laughs) Both of you. Thank you for reminding me, Bo. (laughs) 13. Boo, 20, unnatural. Yeah. Dirty 20. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dirty. Viola being in the front, well, the way you guys are angled in order to get the most leverage, unfortunately, where you are standing, you get the brunt of this disgusting smog. Uh, it, it it chokes you. You are gagging, trying not to vomit. Your eyes are burning and tearing at this god-awful smell. And it just seems to just cling to your throat, like you're having trouble breathing now as you step back. Well, I am never, ever going along with any of your ideas again. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, we As don't... you try to speak, it's just sticking to your throat. You can barely speak. I mean, you didn't really get hurt at all. Um, and now we know that, um, well, we don't really know what it is, but <laughs> well, one step you closer to yet. finding out. <laughs> uh, this noxious kind of fume just seems to be hovering around Viola's face. She can see through it, but she can't speak. I can't talk. It is clinging to your throat. I was gonna sidestep. <laughs> She's just gonna point at Bo very angrily. <laughs> well, maybe we could pocket that in a jar. It is clear now. <laughs> it just, it's gone now? Oh, no, uh, no, Bo? not from you. Oh, from I can look in the box. <laughs> Did you want to look inside the box? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> look, when you have a focus, I mean, you know? Inside of it, you kind of see these melted, brittle gold bits, these like flecks on the bottom of it. And you also see what appears to be a slightly damaged, looks like there are chips in it, 
uh, a scroll. All right, I guess I'll pick up. You said it was gold bits. There are gold bits on the bottom, as if like melted and cracked and broken. And then there's this <laughs> scroll with like bits that look like almost as if they were cut out of it, but it's it's a scroll sitting inside of there. Okay, I've added gold bits and scroll. You my... picked up the scroll? Yes. Roll me a charisma <laughs> check. Okay. Oh. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> you reach in to pick up this scroll, and as soon as your fingers clamp around it, you realize what those little breaks in it were that looked like it was cut. It wasn't that it was cut, it was that it was chipped. Because as soon as you lift the scroll with just gentle weight from your hand, it begins to just disintegrate. Oh, that wouldn't have been dexterity for picking it up. It was more like a luck thing. Like, are you just going to reach in and grab it? Or if you were going to be, like, careful about it? <laughs> oh, okay. It's now kind of just dust. Uh, Stay, yeah. do you have one of them fixer-upper spells? Stay in a stone cloud around my face. Over. <laughs> you know, like those ones that if you break your clothing or get a rip, it will, it will tie it up for you or whatever, mend it up. I focused more on how to mend lives than how to mend objects. Okay, fine, fine. I apologize. Uh, Viola, are you, are you are you hanging in there all right? She's going to walk over in front of Stan and start waving her hands around her face and hope that Stan can help her. Stan tilts her head to the side. Wait. Are you hurt? You just see this cloud of smog that's just draped all across Viola's face. You can see her through it, but it's just this noxious kind of purpley green smog that's just burning her throat and burning her eyes. It's just red eyes and tears streaking down her face as she can't speak and can barely breathe. She's um. very uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, I got an idea. I got this, I got a flask of water. What if we just throw it on her? Like the, pour it over the top. It should take out that. The water weight that might on the... help. Are you okay with this? Like, give me a. What about a thumbs up? Okay, okay. He's gonna take his water skin and pour it over. Well, I guess. Uh, Stay it. If you could pour it over, <laughs> I can't reach up that. <laughs> like, Is this your water like skin? Your... Like your personal yeah. one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So sure. Yeah. Stay and will pour some water on Viola's head and sort of try to wave some of the smog away. Okay. Now Viola is choking and she's wet. <laughs> 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 Poor girl. Her beautiful I braids are now like wait. that dampened color. I got a second idea. I can open up a modeling with her so at least we can communicate. <laughs> uh, anybody else want to be involved? Anyone? All right. Then it will be just her and I. All right. We got this for two hours and he crushes the dice in his hand again. So how how's it going in there? How's it going in there? This is the most awful thing I've ever experienced in my life. I am choking to oh. death. My eyes are watering. I'm never helping you again with any of your ideas. She said overall it's okay and we should just keep going. <laughs> <What happened? laughs> no, actually it's it's actually causing her some frustration, I think, but uh, let me let me see it's something. Clear. Should we keep going? <laughs> it might as well. Maybe there's a solution somewhere in here. All right, she is uncomfortable, but she is okay with us continuing on. What let us you... know if that changes. W what did you all? I'm find? guessing I'm not taking any damage at the moment. Correct. <laughs> at the moment, correct. <laughs> oh, at the moment, okay. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe Viola secretly doesn't need to breathe. <laughs> She's a fish creature. <laughs> uh, did you guys find anything over there that wasn't so uh, dusty? There was a little baggie you were looking at. It wasn't there. <laughs> little baggie. Uh, Snow's had really good luck with little baggies. I'm just saying. <laughs> He's found rocks before. Yeah, so you, uh, there's this little uh, leather pouch. Just has a little drawstring on it. You undo it. It's, it itself is thick. It kind of made it look like it might hold more than it actually does. What you see inside is 
one this opaque gray crystal probably about the size of your pinky and you see a marble he takes both of them out holds them in his hand looks at them do they seem to be magical they appear to be a gray crystal the size of your pinky and a marble (laughs) okay (laughs) did you want to do an arcana check on them or did you want to okay go ahead roll for me (laughs) 15 just staring at them i mean you're well enough versed with different types of magic needing different types of components having different items that could be cast upon perhaps you don't know what it might be but there is a distinct possibility based on a number of factors including where the heck you are that they could be magical i mean your friend is covered in a smog cloud (laughs) oh wait what if we created a draft on the cloud we like so i got my uh cape here so what if we just kind of like move it real quick around her in our head area just kind i of... think she's been trying something similar to that to no avail i've been it's... waving my hands around my head for forever and it's not helping yeah but your hands are smaller than a cape length so this would be like they're a... bigger than yours i'm not okay i'm not attacking your hands here i'm just saying <laughs> sorry i'm very uncomfortable right now <laughs> I apologize. Noted. (laughs) Um, Thane will unwrap a scarf from around her neck, pour some water on part of it, and hand it over to Viola, saying, try wrapping this around your face to see if it helps with what you're inhaling, at least. Okay, so Viola's going (laughs) to take it from her and try that. Okay. Like, tries to wipe out her eyes and... You know, there's a there's there's a part of you you're not quite sure if it's a placebo effect just from your best friend ever in the world handing <laughs> you one of her scarves but you seem to be breathing just a little bit easier but you still can't speak it still burns your throat but you seem to be maybe breathing just a little easier tell stay in thank you for me and tell her that it's helping a little bit but i still can't talk she said thank you it is helping but she's a bit mute that's all right <laughs> what what is shown when I walk over this way? When you walk in that direction, you see the path continuing upward. And you see a notable like even with those lamps that are or these torches that are already set, you can see that there is some kind of glow coming from the end of whatever this passage is. There's some notable reddish fiery glow you're talking about like up here yeah like if you can like from wherever this passage goes oh you mean like off in the distance so it'd be like from that way okay i see Mm -hmm. is this kind of i'm trying to go based on like sight lines (laughs) yeah no it's okay is this anything of value as we walk by or is it just kind of decorative at this point that you see a broken crate this one is broken there give me an investigation check on this pile of wood stay in a stick or viola staying far away from that crate that's fair it is already technically open it's just kind of in pieces (laughs) so you see in that one you catch glimpse of an actual whole gold coin and something else you notice and you now noted about the other the other crate as well and even that table Especially the table, actually, because it was also broken when you saw it. Oh. It was broken, you but mean the this table. Correct. Okay, because Bo didn't see that one. He stayed down here. Did he never actually look at it? Mm-mm. Oh, never mind then. <laughs> so this this crate. I just wanted to be honest. He never looked. <laughs> now he wants to be honest. Well, I, the player, am being honest. Ask us in the Q and A why I'm laughing at that. <laughs> so you notice about this crate is that while it looks broken it looks like time has done its damage to it as far as the way it's broken down the wood itself actually appears to be relatively pristine as if preserved think about that gunk but so besides the gold coin all i see is that is that it's preserved mm-hmm. right, and will... you know more of the passage i guess <laughs> right, i will add a gold piece i was just racking him up <laughs> <laughs> How long has the cloud been around Viola's head now? Probably 
just a couple of minutes. It doesn't take you very long to make this. Um, it doesn't seem like it's a very long uh, cavern. So maybe, maybe two minutes. Maybe a minute. I mean, we have no, maybe two minutes or so. You guys were fess, f like fussing with it a bit. Because we can get thirty feet in six seconds, technically, depending on our right. pace we're going I'm here. So, for <laughs> yeah, pausing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, if we think about it from that perspective, it might be like. And I'm accounting for also, you know, her trying to communicate, her like <laughs> actually getting choked by this thing, staying trying to help, you trying to help. When you go all the way as far as you are. So, Bo, as you seem to be leading the charge. So, what you see in here, another emptied out, well, another kind of dug out cavern. What you also seem to know is that it's very tall. You go running inside. Oh, shy. I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah, I mean, he was just moving forward. Don't sure. Say, yeah. I'm... You hold right there and let me tell you what you see. <laughs> you see an enormous boulder, much higher than. For, for where the ceiling was when you began, this thing is higher than that. Like, it is tall. It has crooked, carved steps leading up to the cracked remains of a throne. And still resting on the seat of this still supple-looking wood is a plush pillow. On this plush pillow, you see a sparkling golden crown with rubies encased in the metal. And the entire site is visible through these rolling embers that encase the <laughs> entire boulder and give off this wave of heat. And all around in this area, you also see cracked remains of a marble, <laughs> what appears to be a marble altar. You see some broken ceramic bowls and pottery around what appears to be at the far side, this dugout pit. Inside of this pit lit by the torch on the opposite side, there is gently rolling liquid, this deep, dark red. Bo, please give me a constitution check. All right. Please roll it at disadvantage. Eight. You have a choice to make. As your whole body stiffens and your heart starts racing. So you immediately know what is in there. You're feeling that cool sweat on the back of your neck. Your hands are starting to shake. Like, this is a tremendous, like, overwhelming feeling. You have a choice to make. Between? You have a choice between either battling an instinct or giving in to an instinct. I will battle. Okay. Do you remember the die type we discussed? <laughs> I think it was a D6. A D6? Yeah. That seems a little low, <laughs> but it's fine. No, go ahead. Uh, roll me one d6. Actually, no, I'm going to roll a d6. That's going to be three points of damage. Let's call it psychic damage. Right, you do enough a, of that. Yeah, so I'm at 13. Okay, you take three points of psychic damage as you just kind of curl your fists in, your own nails kind of biting into your skin, but you are able to control yourself. And you also said there was a crown. Crayon. Uh, yes, there is a crown at the top of this. Like right here? Is that it? Yep. I can do for Chad is I can move in. But there's also this wave of heat coming off of this boulder where the throne is. The closer you get, it's, it's um, you only see these little embers that are kind of sparkling around the boulder. They're, you don't see a full on flame. But the closer you get, it feels as if you are standing in front of a bonfire. And stay into a religion check or something to see if she recognizes, like, who this might be a altar for, what sort of thing this might be from. You can do so at disadvantage. Yeah. Viola's gonna mind link to Bo and say, like, uh, I don't think you should touch that. 
Oh, but Vi Viola was mind linked and all of that. Yeah. Oh, do I get psychic damage but, too? But I have to open it to her. I don't necessarily like it's not constant. Like I have to like actually think about communicating to her. So okay, so if that's the case, if she was trying to communicate and like since you're her only form of communication and you didn't open the link to her, was she just screaming into the void? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he would have been mostly ignoring her. Like, he would have heard her, but it doesn't mean he's responding back to her immediately. Okay. Like, it takes, like, it's a difference between, like, thinking back to her and not thinking back. So he could think to himself without it sharing. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Because that would that have sucked. <laughs> I am That's going a 19 to... Total. Even with disadvantage. Nice. Even with disadvantage. I am going to take okay. one of these potions of healing as we're gathering in that I have. Okay. Stay in. No name comes to you. Nothing recognizable comes to you for anything like this. It, the only thing that you can kind of piece together is the absence of knowledge about this, which tells you more than you kind of thought it might. Whatever this is, whatever worship this might be, has nothing to do with the light. I do not think we should stay here long. I, I actually is... agree. We should get out of here quickly, but I also want to grab that crown. We should grab that crown real quick. No. Nothing in here has anything to do with the light. We need to get out of here. Yeah, I wasn't going to keep anything that's here. I'm thinking we sell it. <laughs> no. I all mean, right, that right. was already in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, how close are you to this thing? <laughs> I mean, I moved my token right there. Hmm. A while ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Bo physically moved farther away, kind of, as he's trying to picture an angle at it. Snow, roll me a constitution saving throw. Roll it at disadvantage. Well, that was a nat 20. Oh, my. And that one is a 10. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, these disadvantages things are being to screw us now. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. It's almost like you're up against something pretty nasty. I do think if Viola sees Snow reaching for it, she's going to try to, like, grab his arm and pull him back and stop him. If I'm close enough. You can. His physical... You, you recognize it's his physical distance from this boulder. And the heat. Like, he is feeling this wall of heat. Snow, you're going to take five... It's going to be five fire damage. Okay. As just this... The closer you get, it is just a wall of heat. And as you take that damage, as you feel like you are too close, the roaring of this non-existent fire in your face almost also sounds like words creeping in your head. The fire itself seems to speak as if saying, put me Snow, you okay over there? Snow? I am fantastic. Can I grab the crown? <laughs> if Viola it sees him trying to way, grab it. way, way high. You would have to oh, climb dang. up the okay. steps. Are there okay. steps to it? How high up are the steps? So the steps start right where you are. Give me one I see. Moment. So Bo, I mean, so Snow, your team grab the crown. Is that is that what you're thinking? So let me let me just clarify here. So the steps are carved into this boulder leading up to the throne. The entire thing is encased in these little fluttering embers. But these little fluttering embers around this boulder are giving off the same kind of heat as if you were trying to step into a bonfire. Yeah, Snow will step back after taking the damage. Okay. But how high up are you saying that is though here? It's probably a solid 40 feet up. All right. Uh, Are you team get the <laughs> crown, Snow? Um, well, I was until the floor became lava, so no. <laughs> I'm going to use my dash action. And that would give Viola's me... Viola's going to try to stop him. Well, if I'm over here, here so... <laughs> well, the steps are only on one side, aren't I they? I don't need the steps. <laughs> <laughs> So that gives me 70 feet if I do dash as oh a bonus God. action. So I'm just going to run straight up the wall, grab the crown, and then come down. <laughs> this is what you want to do? 
Yes. <laughs> Viola, you're good with this? <laughs> if I can try to get to him and grab him, I'm gonna try, but... We'll have you both roll initiative. You'll roll dexterity, not initiative, but dexterity. He's a very fast boy, but what I've learned is that there's always a chance for a nat 20. <laughs> oh, or a nat 1. Or a nat 1. Oh. Bo, you make your way around and you're kind of eyeing the, the boulder, making your plans until you get tackled by Viola, <laughs> who would rather you not do so. You, you can get to him to stop him from running. Wait, is she actually tackling me? Are you actually tackling him? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Well, because we're in fiery <laughs> embers. Well, out Do of you... it, but it's because before you... If you tackled me, I'm on the embers. Were you staying... Were that? Were you on the embers that entire time? No, I was right here, and then I was moving up and over. So what she was attempting to do was to stop you before you even, like, got yeah. there, is what I would say. So, so I before never, you hit the so embers. So she stopped me here? That's what I would say. That was her intention. Bo, you need to stay away from that crown. It doesn't look good. It looks like it's been sitting up there forever. Stan says it's bad. And Stan is a very smart lady, and I trust her word. Stan says so everything is bad. <laughs> no. She's usually right, I'm not gonna lie. You hear that burning again. Put me out. Nose gonna take out his water skin and just drizzle a little bit of water onto the embers and see if anything happens. Immediately you see this puffs of steam from where your water hit. Are, are you trying to put out the fire? I mean, yeah. Why not? Alright, Viola, can you get off of me More now? More than that. Are you gonna stay on the ground? I'm not gonna stay on this ground. I'm gonna stand up, but I... I'm... Are you gonna stay away from the crown? Scout's honor. I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> My... Okay. I... 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 Oh, what's the what's the expression? <laughs> By my honor, <laughs> I will stay away. <laughs> Wait, it involves honor. I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that's what it is. Viola will get up off of him, but she's not gonna take her eyes off of him. Noted. Her, her teary eyes. Her very teary yes, eyes. Yeah, thanks to you. It's okay. Eventually, not breathing will come into effect. Well, I can breathe, can't I? It just hurts. It hurts a lot. Oh, now she can breathe because initially, I, oh wait, I think it was it's after the towel. Difficult, thing. yeah, it's difficult. So that's why she can't speak. Like it's just clogging up. So she can breathe enough to stay standing, for now, but <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. Ask Snow what he's doing and why he's doing it. I'm I'm sorry. Were you talking to me? Yes, uh, please ask Snow what he, you're the only person I can talk to right now. Uh, well, maybe you should have <laughs> thought about that before you tackled me on the ground. <laughs> maybe you don't need to steal everything. I sever the link. Grab everything I sever the link so I stop hearing that. <laughs> She's screaming into the void. <laughs> I hang up <laughs> with a snap. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Now She's I, just gonna start <laughs> waving her arms in front of his face to try and get her to him to answer her. That's two times we both stopped their magic effect on her now. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> we we should leave this place. It is <laughs> it is not good. Snow, what are you doing over there? I just want to see something real quick. And he's going to take some of the blood, assuming, or the red liquid. He doesn't know it's blood. He's going to take some of the red liquid and put that on the embers. What are you picking it up with? Yeah, I was hoping you weren't going to ask me that. <laughs> oh, he doesn't really... Why don't I own a cup? <laughs> I don't want to waste my water skin. Well, everyone seems uh, kind of distracted, so I would like to enter stealth. <laughs> Go for it. Snow is... Oh, you dumped out water. You have your water skin. Well, I didn't dump all of it out, but I didn't want to use all of it, but 
what the heck? He's going to fill up his water skin with the blood. <laughs> okay, and as you... No! As you are scooping Just up the liquid into your water skin, it has that same viscosity of blood. I got a 21 on stealth. Noted. And then I'm going to climb up here. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> He was never gonna, gonna scout. <laughs> okay. I, was, I dumped the blood onto the embers. Excellent. So, Bo, <laughs> you start running up. <laughs> Give me a moment. I just want to see what happens. It's Same. not worth seeing what happens. Stop that. But it could be. <laughs> I'm just glad that Snow is finally is kind of rolling? on Bo's side here with exploration. <laughs> we need We're to learning get out so of much. Here. We're learning We're so much. In place. We need I'll to go back curious. and tell the guardianship about this place. But we don't have anything to tell them other than the fact that we found a cavern and nothing else. Found a cavern that is dedicated to the worship of something dark. I know nothing of this. And I know a lot about religion. Now I'm getting to question. There's only what one way to learn. <laughs> There's more than one way to learn. Experience does not have to be your teacher. All right, Bo, you run, dashing up the top of that boulder, through these flames or through the embers. Every step feels like your skin is being scorched, like it could be just dragged off of your bones. It gets hotter with every step as if you are purposefully aiming for the heart of the flame. As you're getting to the top, it is this pinnacle of like, like stepping into the center of the sun. You're going to take a total of 18 damage. On our next tale. You hear this sound just wrapping around your mind. Put me out you're not welcome she's gonna go up there and pick him up and start bringing him back down stan's gonna look over at snow we need to leave what oh um sure they know not the evil upon which this place sits i think everyone needs to take a few minutes to cool off and then we can gather and talk this out like the competent adults we are but there's no harm in feeling what you need to I believe this might be when a hug is required. Here might might escape the, the <laughs> corner and roll down her cheek. Was I in the wrong? But the worst moment before your eyes shoot open into this darkness of this hovel is that you find yourself with this gleeful smile on your face, along with tears on your eyes. 